and that you need to know exactly what you know, that graph looks like. But there are a couple things that we could do here. So um, hmm. first of all, let's go ahead and graph x squared. That's the parent function, so that's not bad. It looks something like that. Right? Now this one, um, we know if anything else, we could find the x-intercepts here. Right? So we could set this equal to 0. And then we could factor out an x. Right? Therefore, we could say x equals 0 and x equals 2. So we have another 0 and then at 1, 2. Now I heard somebody um, I think so. yeah. I heard somebody else say that um, the, um, I don't remember what I was thinking of. Let's make this a little bit wider. OK? So if we're looking at our graph, again, we know, oh, somebody said that it was opening down, right? Because that's a negative x squared. So again, just to kind of sketch, and that's all we're looking for, is the graph's going to look something like that. Correct? Now, in this example, they're not telling us where our region is bounded by, right? They're saying that they want to find the region enclosed. So what we're doing is we're looking for the intersection points, correct? So we have this intersection point, looks like it's at 0, 0. And this one, mm, I don't know how well I sketched everything, but it looks like it could be maybe at 1, 1, or you know, I don't know. So there's a couple different ways that we can um, do this. But again, when we're, showing, when we're looking for this, a lot of times we're going to look for us showing our work. So we want to find the, the points of intersection. Or we could just say, POI. Now, to find the points of intersections, what do we know is true for our two equations? At these two points, what is true? They are e e equal. Yeah, they're equivalent. They're equal, right? So if we needed to show work for points, right? They're asking us to show work to find points. Couldn't we just set the two equations equal to each other? x squared equals 2x minus x squared. Yes, that's going to at least tell you where the points are equal. And therefore, we could add that. So we'd have 2x squared equals 2x. You could do 2x squared minus 2x equals 0. And then you could factor out a 2x. And therefore, you're left with a x minus 1. So we could say the points of intersections occur at x equals 0 and x equals 1. Now. If we needed to find points, we would need to find the y values as well, right? So to find the y values, we could either just plug in both these points. And since they're equal to both equations, it doesn't matter which equation we plug them into. But I'd say plugging them into x squared would be the easiest, right? So if you needed to find the points of inflection, you could just say, well, it's from 0, 0. And it's going to be from um, 1, 1, 1. Right? But this is important enough because this is going to at least give us our, in, our intervals of our integrand that we're going to be using. Now, the next thing is we've got to look at which function is on top. Right? And the problem is we don't have them as like f of x and g of x's here. Correct? So here we have them as both as y's. So there's a couple of, I mean, we could call them y1 and y2 if you want to. And sometimes that's helpful. So we can let, you know, say, let y1 equal x squared, and let y2 equal 2x minus x squared. Because remember, if I'm going to change the name of the function, if I'm going to call it f of x, g of x, p of x, q of x, I've got, sure got to make sure I'm defining them, right? You just can't throw a 1 in there and say, oh, that's the new name of my function. right? We don't just want to do that. We want to say, let's let y of 1 equal x squared, and let's let y2 equal 2x minus x squared. Does that make sense? Yes? No? OK. Yes. All right. So I'm going to, so therefore, technically, we have y2 is above y1, right? So when we do our integral, we're going to want to subtract y2 from y1. Does that make sense? Yes? No? OK. So I'm going to erase our visual representation, if that's OK. So now my integral is from the x value 0 to 1. And then 
I'm going to do y2 minus y1 dx. Now again, if we just need to show our work, like for instance here, like at least that's a nice known work because we have, we have defined what, L, um, what y1 and y2 is. So that can at least give us at least points for showing setting up our integrand because we have the intervals as well as we have what is going to be the height, which is y2 minus y1. Now obviously to integrate this, we're going to have to plug in those values. So when we go ahead and plug in the values, we have 1 to 0. y2 is 2x minus x squared minus y1, which is x squared. And then is this something that's not too bad to integrate? Yeah, we can kind of integrate this. This is too bad. So we'll add 2 um, divided by that, so or 2, so therefore that is x minus 1 third x cubed. Wait a minute, what happened here? No, it's going to become, that becomes a 2x squared, sorry. Yeah, sorry, well let me write that out there. These two combine to give you a negative 2x squared, right? So therefore, there should be a 2. x minus 2x squared, yeah, from 1 to 0. So what I did is I combined those to give you negative 2x squared, and then I added the 3 and divided by it right there. And therefore, that's going to be 1 minus 2 thirds times 1 cubed minus 0. So I have 1 minus 2 thirds, which is going to equal 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 thirds, right? All right, so let's go ahead and try the calculator. Um, so you, we can see 